Breaking news tonight, Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. His attorney tells CNN that he is currently being processed. The charges are unclear as of this moment. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say. This is incredibly disturbing footage, so I do want to warn our viewers, as you did. But as you said, Cassie's lawsuit, which was filed in November of 2023 and then was quickly settled overnight, it did open the floodgates. But in that complaint, Jake, she details an incident that she alleged happened in March of 2016 at a hotel in Los Angeles, physically assaulted by Diddy. Now our team in the LA Bureau we have got our hands on that surveillance footage and it appears to corroborate Cassie's claims identically. I'm Wild Young and this is the TMZ Minute. Diddy has taken a major blow in court. The mogul has been hit with a $100 million default judgment in a sexual assault case from an incident that occurred in 1997. A man, Derek Lee Cardello Smith, claimed Diddy assaulted him at a party and he filed a lawsuit against the hip hop icon for $100 million. It appears Diddy did not file an answer to the complaint and also missed a hearing for a default judgment that was set for Monday. A judge ultimately awarded Cardello Smith the $100 million with Diddy having to pay installments of $10 million per month starting October 1st. Kim Zolciak is firing back at her estranged husband Corey Beerman's claims that she is delaying the sale of their marital home. Kim was spotted at LAX where she suggested that Croy doesn't pay for anything. She says she's the one paying the bills, their kids' clothing, and most of the food. As TMZ previously reported, Croy has asked a judge to give him the power to force the sale of their home in Georgia, accusing Kim of passing on serious offers. Now to a CNN exclusive, the Department of Justice may be taking steps to indict music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Two sources close to the investigation tell us that a federal grand jury may soon hear from Diddy's accusers. Since November, Combs has been named in eight civil lawsuits, seven of them directly accusing him of sexual assault. I mean, in the beginning, like the first three and a half years, he was, I mean, like the first three months, three, four months, he was really nice. But then after that, he was, he started being that. So Shocking new accusations. His alleged victim humiliated and traumatized. Diddy's legal troubles just got bigger, less than 48 hours after his somber mea culpa. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Extra has obtained this explosive new 15-page lawsuit filed by model Crystal McKinney. She claims he got her drunk and high with a joint that was laced with what she says was a narcotic or other intoxicating substance. The rest of a former SU basketball walk-on player, Brendan Paul, who's part, police say, of a sex trafficking investigation of rap mogul Sean P. Diddy Combs. Paul is accused in court documents of being Combs' drug mule. What they're looking for, because it was gone on the premises of sex, they're looking for pictures of girls that may appear to be under age context. Like they in the act. That's what they're looking for. So now they're gonna go through all those devices. If somebody got any kind of weird fetishes that they got little kids or little girls or something like that in any kind of pictures or any kind of photos that they took out of that. It's craziness, man. And, and, and you know what's you know what's so crazy is, bro, that all these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this. And yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine. Ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him. But he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN. It's keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. Nobody's talking about that. This is something that goes on, man. 
that they're gonna push up under the rug and a few a few years later bad boy five six seven eight will be out man I, I, and you know what's you know what's so crazy is bro that all these stories has been around the industry for a long time all these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this. Yo, man, I should have saw, he told me he should have saw this coming with Cassie and the way he treated women when he slapped his mother. And I was like, he did what? Yo, I did it. Told my he want receipts. Let's start with your mother, n Your mother got the receipts. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts. He said, I'm gonna drug them out. I'm gonna get them all on drugs. And I'm gonna pimp their out to my, in the studio. He said, yo, I'm gonna drug their ass out and pick them out and, and, and pimp them out to my. This is incredibly disturbing footage. So I do want to warn our viewers as you did. But as you said, Cassie's lawsuit, which was filed in November of 2023 and then was quickly settled overnight it did open the floodgates but in that complaint jake she details an incident that she alleged happened in march of 2016 at a hotel in los angeles physically assaulted by diddy now our team in the la bureau we have got our hands on that surveillance footage and it appears to corroborate cassie's claims identically it's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life sometimes you got to do that I was up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. And I know people gonna think that, you know, yo, this is all what Gene wanted to see. But now listen here, man. The devil got a purpose, God got a plan. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil got his purpose, but God got a plan. You understand? And it's all in God's plan, man. You understand? To let people see, because a lot of people wasn't believing that this stuff even existed, brother. A lot of people didn't even think that this was, that, you know, Cassie was telling lies. Gene been telling lies. Lil Rob been telling lies. Everybody lying on Diddy. But Diddy told the truth. What's up, man? You good? I'm good. How are you? All right, doing? young brother. Everything's good. Everything's selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? No, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You, you never really got my number, so. Right, okay. My number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Tell you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could indict a ham sandwich, but the Southern District of New York has a 98.2 conviction rate. All right, for those who don't know, if you got 100 people, only one point two eight or something like that, 98 point. You have 1.8, only 1.8 has won against them. So now what they do, they already got the witnesses. They already got the people because let me just say something. With the sex trafficking thing, it only takes one witness to convince the jury. One witness. And we know who that witness is going to be. Cassie. I, I love entertaining people. I love watching people have a good time. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't like the concepts when everybody has a camera up. 
Yeah, right. You know yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's all of them now. At, yeah. at my concerts, you, you, you dance all night. You can't even get to your phone. You so much in the... There's so much love going on. Right. It was going on the premises of sex. They're looking for pictures of girls that may appear to be under age. Yes, it's, it was breaking news. Diddy adopted a right child. <laughs> because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent. It's craziness, man. I, I, and you know what's you know what's so crazy is, bro, that. All these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this. And yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine. Ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him, but he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN, is keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. Nobody's talking about that. This is something that goes on, man, that they're gonna push up under the rug and a few, a few years later, bad boy, five, six, seven, eight will be out. Um, context, like they in the act. That's what they're looking for. So now they're gonna go through all those devices. If somebody got any kind of weird fetishes that they got little kids or little girls or something like that in any kind of pictures or any kind of photos that they took out of that, man. I, I, and you know what's you know what's so crazy is, bro, that all these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this. Yo, man, I should have saw. He told me he should have saw this coming with Cassie and the way he treated women when he slapped his mother. And I was like, he did what? Yo, I did it. I told my he wanted receipts. Let's start with your mother, n Your mother got the receipts. Everything is in your mother's name. That's the one who got the receipts. In the studio, he said, yo, I'm a drug that off and pick them out and, and, and pip them out to my, <laughs> pip them out to my nick. He looking around like, damn, like, a lot of guys kissing each other in here, man. You feel me? What y'all do is y'all business. So you, you've been to a party and seen this? Oh, I've seen it firsthand, multiple times. I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress, bro. What? I've seen Dwight Howard in a pink dress with two other trans ladies in dresses. They all the same height at a Diddy party. Oh. Ask about Dwight Howard in Mexico. What's up with Dwight Howard in Mexico? You know, they don't got paparazzi out there like that. You feel me? They was down there hooping. He going to the club with these same trans ladies. Sean Diddy Combs was arrested Monday evening in Manhattan following a grand jury indictment that has placed the hip hop mogul in the center of a legal storm. The arrest comes months after Homeland Security agents raided his Los Angeles and Miami properties in late March, an operation seemingly triggered by a growing number of SA lawsuits filed against the Bad Boy Records founder. The legal trouble for Combs began to intensify last November when his former longtime girlfriend, R&B singer Cassie Ventura, filed a headline-grabbing lawsuit. 
In it, she accused Combs of SAT and psychological manipulation during their decade-long relationship. While the two reached a private settlement just a day after the suit was filed, the case opened the floodgates for additional allegations. Since then, eight women and one man have come forward with their own claims against the music icon, accusing him of crimes ranging from S, A to S, T. Though details surrounding the exact charges remain sealed for the moment, the Southern District of New York has confirmed Combs' arrest. U.S. Attorney Damian Williams issued a statement Monday night explaining that federal agents arrested Combs based on a sealed indictment filed by SDNY. He also added that the indictment is expected to be unsealed the following morning, promising more information as the case progresses. After news of the arrest broke, Combs's defense attorney, Mark Agnifilo, responded with a strongly worded statement, denouncing the decision to pursue what he calls an unjust prosecution. In his statement, Agnifilo painted a picture of Combs as a dedicated father, philanthropist, and music legend who has spent the last three decades building an empire while also giving back to his community. He acknowledged that while Combs may not be a perfect man, he firmly believes his client is not a criminal. Agnifilo highlighted Combs' cooperation with authorities, pointing out that he voluntarily moved to New York in anticipation of possible charges, further asserting that Combs looks forward to clearing his name in court. He also urged the public to withhold judgment until all the facts are made public, calling these the acts of an innocent man who has nothing to hide. Attorney Tyrone Blackburn, who represents several of Combs' accusers, saw the arrest as a critical moment in the pursuit of justice. Blackburn, who is currently handling the cases of Liza Gardner, Rodney Lilrod Jones, and April Lampros, each of whom have filed their own SA lawsuits against Combs, stated that the arrest marked the first step toward holding the music mogul accountable. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Blackburn expressed confidence that the criminal process would bring clarity and justice, while also hinting that more victims might soon come forward. The long-awaited arrest of Sean Combs is the first step for our clients receiving justice, Blackburn said. We knew this was coming. The evidence is very clear, and it was only a matter of time. Rolling Stone's investigation earlier this year unearthed even more troubling allegations surrounding Combs's history. Published in May, the report detailed a new claim involving an alleged act of violence at Howard University, as well as other instances of physical aggression toward women and accusations of S.A. from a freelance employee employee at a 2001 party. According to the report, several individuals described Combs as a manipulative and predatory figure, using his wealth, fame, and industry clout to mask what some claimed was a volatile and narcissistic personality. Combs's downfall began to snowball after Cassie Ventura's lawsuit, where she recounted years of alleged A.B., claiming that Combs not only S.A. at her on numerous occasions, but also got her into S. encounters with male S. workers during what he referred to as freak-offs. One of the most disturbing episodes outlined in her 35-page lawsuit occurred in 2016 at a Los Angeles hotel, where Ventura said she was physically attacked after one such encounter. Hotel surveillance footage later surfaced corroborating her account. The footage showed Combs chasing Ventura down a hallway, throwing her to the ground, and kicking her before dragging her away. He also reportedly hurled a glass vase in her direction. Although Combs' legal team initially dismissed Ventura's lawsuit as a money-grabbing scheme, the release of the video prompted him to issue a public apology on Instagram. In his statement, Combs said that he had hit rock bottom during that time in his life and acknowledged that his behavior was inexcusable, expressing regret while stopping short of asking for forgiveness. Despite the apology, the lawsuits continued to pile up. Just before the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act last year, two more women came forward with lawsuits of their own. One accuser, Joy Dickerson Neal, claimed that Combs drugged and S.A. ed her while she was a student at Syracuse University 
in 1991. She also alleged that he filmed the SA and shared the footage with others as a form of revenge porn. Combs's representative categorically denied the allegations, calling the lawsuit a last-minute attempt to exploit the legal system for financial gain. Another woman, identified as Liza Gardner, accused Combs of raping her when she was just 16 years old, following an Uptown Records event in 1990. Gardner also claimed that Combs attacked her the following day, choking her nearly to the point of unconsciousness. Combs' legal team dismissed Gardner's claims as a fabricated and a desperate money grab. The lawsuits have not been limited to women. Earlier this year, music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a suit against Combs, alleging S.A., as well as a lack of payment for his work on the Grammy-nominated The Love album. In May, model Crystal McKinney became the sixth person in less than a year to accuse Combs of S. misconduct, claiming that the music Music mogul had drugged her and got her into unwanted s acts at his New York recording studio in 2003. Combs has continued to deny all accusations, but the fallout from the scandals has been immense. He stepped down as chairman of his Revolt TV media company, sold his stake in the business, and watched as more than a dozen companies distanced themselves from his e-commerce platform. In January, Diageo, the liquor giant behind Ciroc and Deleon Tequila, terminated their partnership with Combs, severing one of the most lucrative business deals of his career. As the charges from the Southern District of New York continue to unfold, the case of Sean Diddy Combs is poised to be one of the most high-profile legal battles in recent memory, with both his legacy and future hanging in the balance. 